when I do this, what do you think of? Poison candy, right? The common Halloween trope that follows us every year. While I can assure you that your Milky Ways and your Butterfingers likely haven't been laced with poison, that doesn't mean there haven't been other nefarious tricks found in bags of candy before. Razor blade, needles, and syringes have been found in Halloween candy. Usually, though, this is just some goofball's idea of a good prank and it's done to family members. Very rarely has it been done to random children. So, where does the myth originate from? In this dark world of ours, only one man can claim to be the man who killed Halloween. Halloween 1974. Some of the most popular costumes of the time were Raggedy Ann and Andy, Daisy Buchan from The Great Gatsby, The Six Billion Dollar Man, or The Peanuts Gang. It was shaping up just to be a regular old Halloween. Only thing out of the ordinary this year would be the amount of red-haired children walking around thanks to the popularity of Raggedy Ann and Andy. Sadly, this would prove to be the last truly innocent Halloween the world would ever see. All in thanks to a man by the name of Ronald O'Brien. Ronald lived in Deer Park, Texas, was married to Diane O'Brien, was the father of two kids, and owner of a large sum of debt, over $100,000. Translated from inflation, he owed over $500,000 in today's economy. Ronald struggled holding down a job. Reports claim that he worked on and off again for over 10 years. Suffice to say, their situation was beginning to look desperate. Though over time, he began to form a plan. A plan that would get almost all the debt paid off. And if pulled off correctly, no one would expect a thing. A few months before Halloween, he took two life insurance policies out on his children, each one $30,000. $145,000 today. At the same time, Ronald was looking into acquiring potassium cyanide. He phoned friends, asked around his workplace, and researched how much would be fatal for the average human. When he acquired it all, all Ronald had to do was wait until the most frightful night of the year. After dining at a friend's place, Ronald, his two kids, and the other family went out to go trick-or-treating. They hit up as many houses as possible under supervision from their parents, of course. Like any Halloween night, it was a jovial time for the children, albeit a bit rainy. The slight downpour cut their time in half, and the kids only went up two streets that night. Still, though, being optimistic, they tried every house they could, even the ones with the lights off. The group would go to a house whose owner, Courtney Melvin, wasn't home. Ronald told the kids to go on without him, and while they were away, he pulled out pixie sticks out from his coat sleeve. These weren't any ordinary pixie sticks, though. They were giant sized, so big that they had to be stapled shut. He caught up to the children and proclaimed that the man in the dark house was giving away the good candy. He gave all four of them a pixie stick and then they all went their separate ways. Upon returning home, Ronald gave the final pixie stick to a kid he knew from church who was still out trick or treating that night. Once everyone was settled, Ronald told his two kids that they could each have one piece of candy before bedtime that night. Unfortunately, Timothy O'Brien chose the pixie stick. With help from his father, Timothy opened up the tainted treat and downed it heartedly. He complained of a bitter taste to his father. Ronald gave his son Kool-Aid to help wash it down. The cyanide was quick to act. Little Timothy had ingested enough to kill two and a half fully grown men. Vomiting came first, then convulsions shortly thereafter. Timothy would be rushed to the hospital, but he would be dead upon arrival. Ronald claimed that he held his son in his arms the entire time, up until the point where his little eyes went blank. The following day, panic was in the air. Parents were throwing out all of their children's candy, and the story was spreading like a fire throughout the state of Texas. One of the parents that went along with Ronald was unable to find the pixie stick. Eventually, though, they found the child asleep with it in his bed. Initially, police didn't suspect Ronald of any wrongdoing. It was a random monster of the night who did this, not a loving father. Ronald claimed that he didn't know where he got the treat, stating that a random man just put his hand outside his door and gave him the treats. But since the group only went up two blocks that night, the police didn't have much work to do when they went door to door asking the residents what kind of candy they gave out that night. 
and not a single one of them gave out pixie sticks that night, let alone the giant 24-inch ones that the police confiscated from all of the children. Suspicions were beginning to mount against Ronald, yet he was steadfast in his claim that Courtney Melvin was the one who did this dastardly deed. Yet Courtney had a ironclad alibi that night. He was working as an air traffic controller. Over 200 people knew where he was the night of Halloween. The cops began to investigate Ronald even further, and they found out about the life insurance policies he'd taken out on his two children. The wife came forward and claimed that she knew nothing about these policies as well. Ronald's co-workers spoke in length over just how much he bragged that his financial issues were soon going to be taking a turn. Most damning of all, though, would be his sudden interest in potassium cyanide. Ronald O'Brien was arrested on November 5th, 1974. Surprisingly enough, he maintained innocence throughout all the court hearings, claiming that a random monster did this. All the evidence was brought forth against him, though, and they even brought his character into question as well. For a father who just lost their child, Ronald showed no signs of sorrow, even going so far to claim that he was going to take the life insurance money to take a small vacation during the middle of Timothy's funeral. Ronald O'Brien was found guilty of capital murder, as well for separate charges of attempted murder. His punishment would be lethal injection. It took nearly a decade, though, for justice to come being delayed by the legal system multiple times and even the Supreme Court once. But on March 31st, 1984, Ronald O'Brien would be executed by lethal injection, proclaiming innocence to the very end and forgiving everyone who was involved in his death. All the while, a crowd gathered outside the facility, cheering on and yelling. Hey everyone, thank you for watching another one of my videos. Please feel free to do all the regular YouTube crap, you know, the good old classic, like, subscribe, share, you know, that little bell you find out at the bottom, you can ring that as well. As always, you'll find a link to all the people who had music in this video down below. So the thumbnail for this video, I made myself, so I think it'd be kind of fun if you guys can share your own pumpkin carvings as well. As always, stay safe and make sure to check any candy you get this Halloween season. Goodbye.